Five Relics of the Limited list. While the January 2020 ban list put a lot of cards on the banned and limited list, it also took a good number of these cards off, some of which shouldn't have been there for near as long as they ended up being. Case in point, cards like Book of Moon, Tribe Infecting Virus, and Morphing Jar 2 have all been residents of the banned and limited list for way longer than any of them should have been. Especially the banned Tribe Infecting Virus hasn't been relevant for forever. And it finally only just came back to three from zero. There are still a plethora of these cards that probably could come from one to three, and it wouldn't have much impact on the game. But without further ado, let's start off with the list. With number five, Infernity Launcher. Infernities used to be a very strong deck. They also tended to get thrown in a lot of weird random FEK builds, all of which required stuff like Firewall Dragon in recent history. But note, none of those builds have actually ever topped in a very long time. Between Launcher and Archfiend, the two limited Infernity cards, Archfiend is the way more concerning one, with its search effects not being once per turn. And Launcher isn't actually that good with only one Archfiend. It's a double monster reborn for Infernities, which would be good for the deck, but when we live in a world where Will of the Salamangrade exists and does very similar things to what Infernity Launcher does, it's a good card, but it definitely isn't something that would be broken by 2020 standards, even if it was at 3. But let's go on to number 4, Eva Gishki Mind Aegis. There are two different Gishkis that are limited, both of which which were hit for very similar reasons. Gus Kraken would hand loop out entire hands when they had three copies, whereas Mind Aegis was part of a deck out FTK. But between the two, Gus Kraken hand loop honestly seems more scary than an FTK that relies on cards which aren't really easily accessible and are easily stoppable with hand traps. If Aegis comes off the list, I doubt that many would even try to play the deck, and even if they did, it still wouldn't be that good. FDKs by 2013 standards are nothing when compared to FDKs that are were in 2019 or even 2020. It might happen that you get killed by this, but it's definitely not likely. And if it doesn't go off, then your opponent's stuck playing Gishki, which is outclassed by pretty much any meta deck that you could be probably playing. Let's move on to number three, Ritual Beast Ulticana Hawk. This is a very odd occupant on the BNL list. The days where Ritual Beast was a deck of competitive relevance goes all the way back to the days of Necroz. Though Ritual Beasts are able to make decent combo plays, they wouldn't be able to be any more meta relevant now if they had extra copies of Canna Hawk. Or ulti Canahawk. The card might not have a hard once per turn anywhere on it, but searching Ritual Beasts only goes so far when you're in a world where much stronger combo boards exist. And this one really serves no purpose for remaining on this list. Maybe three copies might make the deck playable at the regional level. Who knows? But honestly, there is no good reason why this card should really be back at only or be only at one right now. It's a bit silly. But let's move on to number two, Morphing Jar. Who's afraid of Jar FDK? Not me. This card came back to one and it didn't see play. Morphing Jar 2 came back to three and it also hasn't seen play yet. While well, having three of this would be make it possible to play Jar FTK, it doesn't change the fact that Jar FTK isn't consistent or resilient by today's standards. The main strategy of that Jar deck was milling out the opponent on the first turn with cards like Book of Teu and Book of Boon. All while Jar digs for the next copies of each card. It isn't really dangerous for similar reasons to why Cyberstein FTK never caught on. You're running a ton of cards that are useless unless you can resolve the necessary card, which case in point being Morphing Jar. But even with three copies of the Jar, 
the FTK would fizzle out a lot, and it breaks even more often. Also, we live in a world where Ash, Impermanence, Droll, Ghost Ogre, and Effect Veiler all stop this combo. This card could come off the limited list, and nothing would really change. But let's get on to the final and most pointless card to still be on the limited list. Wall of Revealing Light. Uh, I remember this card back when it was good in the early 2000s, when it was played alongside other cards that stun you out, like Gravity Bind, Level Limit Area B, and Messenger of Peace. You just pay 3,000, and your opponent couldn't do anything while you destroy them with something like Wave Motion Cannon or Final Countdown. But this card, like Tribe Infecting Virus, is a card that was great back in the day, but has been subjected to major power creep. This card would come back to three and nothing would happen. Main reason nothing would happen is because cards like Nightmare Phoenix exists. Especially in Master Rule 5, anyone could play it and there's no downside. Especially along with cards like Tornado Dragon and every other piece of back row removal that exists in the game makes this card really, really not make sense that it's still that one. And it's a trap. To boot, it's a trap. So it's also slow in that regard. Well, that's it for the list. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And y'all have a nice day.